No, it's a great question. I mean, first, uh, like you, I think you already alluded to is that I think every real estate agent should be working with investors. Uh, I, I, I see very few do that. I don't know why, uh, but I think everybody should, every real estate agent should, because again, it's repeat business. Investors are very, once you know what they want, if you have that product, they'll pretty much buy it from you. It's, it's a done deal. You can get two commissions, right? You, the, when you sell it to them and then when they're fixed it up and then they sell it. So there's a number of reasons why I think every real estate agent should be working with investors. Uh, you should have kind of like maybe like three to five investors in your back pocket. So if you come across a deal that makes sense for an investor, um, right away, you can just call your, your group of investors. Hey, I got a deal for you and it should be you know done like very quickly. Um, but your question was more like, how do you work with, with, with investors? Well, really? yeah. let's say I don't know. And let's say I don't know any investors. Right. Okay. And they say, OK, well, I like everything that he said. I want that repeat business. Oh, I'm loving the idea of these two commissions. And right. and think about it. Generally, that first commission is going to be a little smaller. Right. Than the second yeah. commission. Yep. Um, so that means they got to hang out. But mm-hmm. how would I the realtors who get your business? Right. How did they engage you in the first place for them to put you in their back pocket? Yeah, it's just really it's understanding how investors think. That's the biggest thing. Right. So um, as a real estate agent, you've got, you know, if you got your retail clients and you got your investor clients, we think very differently. So a retail client is more of an emotional decision. It's like, you know, hey, where do I want to live? The school districts, the granite countertops. You know, it's it's an emotional decision because you're going to live in that house. For us, it's all business, 100% business. We just want to know the numbers. If the numbers make sense, we're going to move forward. So I think the biggest thing is just knowing how to present a deal to an investor. And if you present it properly and the numbers make sense, you're going to have a line of investors out the door that want that deal. So I think it's just um, really understanding how we think and presenting the, presenting to us the, presenting the numbers properly. And in presenting the numbers properly. I know that there's definitely a lot of acronyms that you're looking for. I, you know, I'm generally talking ROI, return on investment, uh, KPI, key performance indicators. When they're coming to you with these numbers, what are some of the core things you're looking for in that presentation? Yeah, really, it's like three big numbers is what you have to be really comfortable with and get to know as, an, as a real estate agent. And it's not really hard. It's just kind of getting to know a little bit. So number one is like what we call ARV, which is after repair value. So what we do is we look at a we look at a property. We say, okay, well, once this thing is fixed up or we've maximized it or we've done whatever we want with it, what is the ARV, the after repair value? So again, we, you know, the real estate agents I've worked with, I've worked with many, many over my career. I want to be able to trust their opinion. And when they say, hey, this thing's going to sell for this when I'm done with it, I want it to sell for that number or more. So you have to know your ARV and you have to know your market and your comps. Uh, I've worked with a few agents over the year where we've done a deal or two. They didn't give me the right ARVs because they were off. And then I was like, man, I can't keep working with you because I'm losing money here by working with you. So the one big number is ARV. That's the first one. Present it properly. Have your proper comps. Um, number two is, of course, purchase price. Like, what are we purchasing it for? What kind of deal can you get me? That's relatively easy because, you know, here's, here's the number. Usually this is what they're asking or, you know, whatever we can get it for. And then number three is what is it going to cost me to take it from, you know, A to B? So you've got a property here today. We're buying it for half a million. We're putting in $200,000. That's that third number. And then we're going to sell it for a million. Let's say I'm just making up numbers here. So you be able to, you know, roughly estimate what that, that middle number is uh, that, that, you know, how much is going to take to go from point A to point B. And again, we're not expecting the real estate agents to be specialists and contractors and know what a roof costs and all that kind of stuff, but a general either per square foot number or like a, Hey, this house needs a lot of work. We need to put about 50,000 into it or hundred thousand or whatever. Uh, that's the big three numbers. Once we have those numbers, then we can get a pretty good idea if the deal is going to make sense.